Good morning. My name is Jadis, and if you've seen my previous videos, then you know that I'm transgender. And if you haven't, well, you do now. Today I'm here to talk about sex, and why, as transgender individuals, we must be forthright about our biology. What I have to say pertains specifically to transgendered women in sexual relationships with cis men. However, if you feel it pertains to you and your potential relationships, cherry-pick what you may. Full disclosure, this video came about after engaging in a debate on this very subject online, and I have, myself, cherry-picked some of my better arguments from that thread. Now then, let me start by saying sex is about communication, trust, and mutual respect. Or at least it should be. And even if you think your partner may not believe as much, it is better to be the bigger person and afford the benefit of the doubt anyway. Sex is also about vulnerability opening up, and giving and receiving pleasure and intimacy from another human being. What's the big deal? It's just sex. Well, to that I say, what if it's not? To us, who suppose we are feminists, and empowering ourselves by taking control of our sexuality, the it's just sex is an attractive outlook, but it lacks detail. For example, some men, like many women, look upon sex as something that transcends carnal pleasure and that it is a merging of mind and body and soul. And when we engage in consensual sex, we are giving our bodies and minds and presumably hearts without restraint. And if this sounds like the definition of making love, that's because for some men that's exactly what it is. And while not all men hold such a romantic view of sex, many do. And so, to withhold this information until after we've got our rocks off is a betrayal of that level of intimacy. Now, some of us have argued that we shouldn't have to share our history because it may deny some of us the opportunity to prove that we can be real women in the bedroom. That's not our call to make. If we agreed to engage in sex and his consent was based on a false premise that we were born female, then besides the fact that it may have a real negative effect on his future relationships, if we think he would have declined to have sex with us if he knew our biological history and we still cho choose to go through with it anyway, then we are engaging in rape by deception. Essentially, it's a kind of denial of agency. And what that boils down to is we are just using these men for sex. And while you might argue, who's to say they aren't doing the same with us? That leads me to my next point. The fact is, men by and large have a history of using us as a means to an end. And this is a grievance women have had with men for years. Two people using each other doesn't balance itself out. It just makes them both assholes. Don't be selfish or hypocritical. Two. Our history is nobody's business but ours. How's it hurting them if they don't know? I'll address the latter half of that one first. It reminds me of my experience working in restaurants. I used to have lazy cooks, and uh, some of them would do things, uh, really despicable things, like splash baking grease onto a cut of beef, and then send out that cut of beef to the Goldstein's table. And that's just not kosher. Levity aside, there are real concerns with failure to disclose our history, particularly in regard to our health. Even with the best surgeons, our bodies don't really measure up to a body grown female from the ground up, inside and out. We do have limits, not the least of which being lubrication and elasticity. And we can experience real and peculiar complications from our partners if we don't tell them, for example, to be gentle when penetrating us. The last thing we need is to tear our neo-vaginas. Besides being exceptionally painful and awkward doctor visits, it can also be quite expensive. Also, should we choose to engage in long-term relationships, it's worth noting that we still do have prostates and cancer is still a risk, albeit low, and if, God forbid, we should get such a cancer, we don't want to go through it alone. For our sake and his, tell him. 3. They may turn out to be bigots, and we don't want to have to deal with that. 
this very cynical attitude, albeit understandable, may be a sense of self-preservation developed through years of experience of heartache and damaged self-esteem. However, be that as it may, it is wrong to generalize based on our subjective experiences. Moreover, by withholding this information, we may think we're protecting ourselves, denying them power over us, but in actuality, we are the proverbial white women clutching their purses in the presence of black men. I know it's not easy for us to hear, but we need to give all men a fair shake. When we are forthright, upfront, and honest about who we are, where we came from, what we did, what we are made of, we may absolutely be revealing what we perceive to be the worst of ourselves. Something that, for many of us, is ugly and alien, and a source of great and perpetual torment. And yet, we manage it by tucking it away. But that doesn't make for a healthy relationship. And the longer we keep it secret, the more betrayed our potential partners may feel. And sometimes, if we are not careful, and we do not nip it in the bud from the get-go, it can be a fatal mistake. No one should suffer over transphobia. We already lose so many due to depression and dysphoria, but it's not always unavoidable. And it may be that the ones with whom we are honest, those missed connections, all those maybes, may very well be literal dodged bullets. In the end, it's all about trust and respect for them and for ourselves. And while celibacy may be a price we pay as one sister to another, it's worth it if it keeps us alive. We each give one another hope. Don't let us down. Don't become another statistic.